kind of a, a scrap zero. I want to give you a little bit of history about hostels. That way you'll understand the perspective. And then I also want to give you a little bit of kind of what to expect and how to, how to kind of coerce with what to expect. So have no expectations, but in having no expectations, what to expect. Um, the first is the history of the hostels. This is really important to me because it actually goes back to my grandparents. My grandparents opened this hostel back in 1986. When they opened their hostel, there were no hostels. Hostels may have been even a word that, um, uh, that was created. Uh, there were hostels, but there were more like inns, churches, and places, lodging places where, where churches really saw that these people were doing this unique journey. And it's like, I wanna get down here so y'all can hear me. And let me know if I need to speak up. And, and they wanted to open their arms to hikers, just like is what's happening now, except back then, it was more of a church kind of theme. Like we wanna open our place, our, our facility up. A really good example is actually down in Parisburg. It's called the Holy Family Hostel. It was the pastor of the Catholic Church. He saw the hikers, he went to the church and said, you know, he didn't even go to the church. He actually just started letting the hikers sleep. And they saw that, you know, you're letting them sleep here. Let's create, let's go buy a barn, an old tobacco barn, and let's convert it into a place uh, where our hikers can stay. Um, and that was kind of how it was going. It was free, no cost. And my grandparents came on in 1986, 1985, 86, 86 is when it opened, 85 is when the brainchild got created. And my grandparents said, this is a really neat idea. I wonder if we could do it. So they actually reached out to the ATC and the ATC with our location only 12 miles from town, two miles from a shelter said, this is a neat idea. You know, not many people are doing this kind of thing, but you may not get that many hikers. You're too close to a shelter. You're too close to town. Hikers are really hitting towns. Okay, so then they opened their place up as a summer thing and they loved it. And they just kept doing it for 22 years. That's where I came in as a child at three years old. And then as an adult that just was like, I wanna go visit, you know, not my grandmother, but this cool log cabin in the woods and hang out for a minute and sit on the porch with people that are my age. And, um, and that's, when I was, as that evolved, I ended up running a hostel. Okay, so back in 2016, um, you had a few hostels, and then 2017, boom. I mean, I don't know, but I hear like there's 130 hostels and probably more and adding every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, what that means is you're gonna be hiking and you're gonna hear the word hostel and you're not gonna know what to expect. You can get anybody from someone who can offer you a 12 mile ride to their son's bedroom that they'll trade off for some kind of payment, which that one always kind of feels sketchy to me, to someone who's bought and restored a house, converted the kitchen into something that you can use and created private spaces and bunk spaces and just made it so that this whole house is a hostel to a bunk house and, 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 and a private room accommodation set up. So you gotta cross the board. So how do you know, and this part I don't know, we need to have other people jump in and tell how do you know what do you go to? Okay, I don't even have to ask you to tell me. I know exactly, <laughs> word of mouth. People will start yes, to say, like there's one hiker who came here and she said, the reason I'm here is because people either, say, either said that this was their favorite hostel so far, or the one hostel they wish they had caught was this hostel, which is pretty high up their compliment. And that only comes because I'm just a brainchild for this thing. I don't even understand how it comes. Um, so it comes because you believe I th in the power of the word of mouth. It comes because the, the trail is so special. We could go on a whole tangent on how I've been gifted by this trail. Um, I think what I want to give you guys in essence is 
what I've been given from you guys over the years. The biggest thing I've been given from the Appalachian Trail community is gratitude. Just everyone says thank you. And I've been given, um, there's one other word that I've been given, I can't remember the word. It'll come to mind later. But it's, it's something along the lines of you guys just having an incredible amount of gratitude and, and offering. You've, you've really, in a way, hikers have just really offered themselves up to say, thank you for this experience and how can I help make this experience work for you? It's, you know, these meals that we're doing weren't because I had a crew in the kitchen cooking. It was because I went out to the bunkhouse and I said, well, y'all seem to want to eat and I want to feed you. Can you help? And so for years we've been doing that and slowly people have been wanting to come back and help and food's a nice way to tie people in to help. And so as Jester knows, when she came years ago, we were all in the kitchen cooking together and we were all cleaning together and we still are, but we've backed off that just a little bit because I've got such strong crews that come in. But, um, but what you can give a hostel is you can just give them, even if you don't like it, just thank you. And you can also just give them, um, you know, some form of, of help. Um, I kind of want to take questions as I'm tangenting along. In this pausing moment, do any questions come to your mind as far as like, as far as, you know, what to expect or what to look for? I, I would ask you, is the, is the hostel like you imagined it would be or are you allowing it to develop along the lines of what people want? Oh, that's a good question. As a hostel creator, as someone who owns a hostel, you really have to listen to your audience. But you, re you really have to listen to what do people want, but then you have to have boundaries. And the boundaries is something that when I first created this hostel um, with my ex-husband, I didn't want a lot of boundaries. I just wanted people to have a free experience and hey, you know, yes, you're, you're comfortable, make yourself a home. What I quickly found out was boundaries was the most important thing because by being able to say, if you don't mind, don't cross this line, what happened was people like, oh, okay, cool. I won't cross that line. And then they cross the line if you don't say something and they're in your space and you're just like, oh, this is too much. I figured out that, um, that I've had to have seasons where a season where I closed down a little bit and a season where I closed down a lot because this is such a job right now and I'm in the full threshold of the job. Um, in the spring, you guys can't even begin. Spring is just like a monster. Um, I turned it into my head into Puff the Magic Dragon this year. It was that big of a monster that I had to realize, oh, this is Puff the Magic Dragon. And that way I could kind of survive that angle. Um, but the beautiful thing about the hostels is it's such a community hub for you guys. It's something not worth missing. I think a lot of people will get on the trail and, um, I really think like if you hear about something that's good, a really good hostel, I think it's worth cutting your day short. I think it's worth changing up your plan. I think it's worth, because there's an experience there um, that, is, that is just as magical as the trail itself. I think the culture and the community, if you go back to Benton Mackay, Benton Mackay's original vision to the Appalachian Trail was these tiny communities. Woods Hole is, um, is the heart of one of these communities. Um, Woods Hole is essentially what Benton Mackay had envisioned. Um, and th that is not popping an ego. That is literally a truth. If you look at his vision and you look at Woods Hole, you're like, holy cow, it has been created. Um, Benton Mackay's vision was you would hike from place to place and within the, this natural woods, there would be these little communities where people could come together. And, and I don't think he, he pictured town after town. I really think he pictured a community network that was networked and connected with the trail. And that's what Woods Hole is. Woods Hole um, does not survive on that. That B and B word was only created so that people who were hiking would recognize this was a nice place. It was not created for people to drive in and stay. Um, Woods Hole has also closed down like Airbnb in the past. It said, okay, like I really want the Appalachian Trail hikers. I'm here for the hikers. I want them to be the, the, the bowl that feeds me. Um, 
And I guess I'm just talking more about Woods Hole, but I know Woods Hole and Woods Hole kind of is a great example for a hostel, but you're not gonna see Woods Hole at every hostel. You're gonna see just different experiences. Um, don't expect anything though. Loaner clothes is just such a huge gift. You know, it's like, it's a whole lot of extra laundry. But when you get loaner clothes, grab them. Um, what else is a huge gift? Um, a ride back to the trail. What's whole doesn't do a ride back to the trail. It's hard on the car. Um, and so don't expect these things. There's a word, Bob Peoples. He's a hostel owner that opened in the 90s. He's one of these originals that opened. And when he opened, um, he is now legendary. He's a legend that sadly on the Appalachian Trail, you have people who are legends and then they, they get lost in time. Uh, Rusty's Hard Time Hollow. Uh, can you imagine? Okay, so this guy, Rusty's Hard Time Hollow, he's open in the 80s, he's open in the 90s, and somewhere in 2000 something he closed down. When I was here in 2000 living I was 21. I lived here for the fall for the Southbounders. All the Southbounders that I saw, saw probably 20, came down. Have you met Rusty? Have you met Rusty? <laughs> no. And I hear about this man who's got like a whole barn with just signs. Don't do this, do this, do this, do this. And a hot tub where you put firewood underneath and you can all hop in and jump in a hot tub together. I mean, he was like, and... He was in a land hold in the Shenandoah uh, part, the Shenandoah part of the trail. So it's like he was just like something cool. He got burned out. This, this job, most hostels will last seven years, according to um, according to threads of of bed and breakfast sustainability. How long do people actually keep their bed and breakfast? About seven years, and then they're like, okay, I've seen that, I'm done. Um, this one's probably sticking around because I have a real strange head. <laughs> That's a truth right there. <laughs> it's a very strong truth. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, Rusty is, is not in it anymore, but back to Bob Peoples, he said, came up with the term entitlement factor, like hikers started coming in and they started expecting things because, well, this is, I'm special. I'm a hiker on the Appalachian Trail. You should, you know, you should see me as special. It's one of the most taboo things that can happen for the Appalachian Trail community is, um, and this is not in you guys' realm or, whoa, it could be. Um, it can happen to anybody, but it's when you kind of start to expect something and you don't get it. Um, the trail, what it does is it, and this is from the hostel owner's perspective. I have only hiked recently. And uh, other than that, I've not been a hiker. Outside of a month, I spent in the woods with a backpack. Um, so the trail humbles you. And the reason it humbles you, and I see this, I don't know this, I see this. The reason it humbles you is because you put a heavy pack on your back and you go out in those woods and you have no roof, you have no shelter, you have no water, you have no friends. And everything is just raw. And so your shelter becomes the gift of a lifetime. The water becomes something you're just like, thank you. The friendships become, you know, a stranger you've never met before. Suddenly there's a bond. Um, when you're that humble, you really don't have expectations for anything, and so you're not entitled. But then when you come into the community that's recently been established since 2017, and everybody loves hikers, and next thing you know, well, I should get something for it, for being loved. And uh, it's kind of, it's a weird stigma, but it's a stigma you don't have to worry too much about, because as long as you're hiking, and as long as you have a backpack on your back, there's something that's going to really suck and it's gonna humble you big time. Sorry, just experienced it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't even hiked. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, this is where Tina would come in. Tina's another hostel owner, quarter way in. Highly, 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 highly recommend her. 
she really is all about etiquette and she's really all about like I mean she just knows how to lay it out so it's like take your shoes off and and weird things like I have the weird thing it's like well can you remake your bed and I'll get scrutinized up and down about it but I just know that if y'all want this thing to for me to stick to this thing that's such a wild concept it's not a hotel it's not I'm not a CEO of a million dollar business um, my income is, 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 um, I get Medicaid. <laughs> so, so, but, but this is one thing I love talking about numbers. Okay. And I can be way too honest about numbers, but the reason I get Medicaid is because I basically, my phone, my car, my electric bill is all paid for. By my business i don't pay for any of that because this business is too all-consuming and so because of that and the business is paying for all of that i pay myself less and when you pay yourself less under the umbrella of what's going on with the united states government then i actually am uh, allowed to have medicaid because of that so i'm actually wealthy poor so don't think i'm poor but just know that like that's how i do my numbers everything gets written off and i tie it into that thing i have an expensive accountant who's who sees my numbers and sees who i ever do everything so he knows if i'm breaking a law i'm all about if you hand me a dollar it goes in the system and i pay my taxes um not all hostels owners are, dot, are like that not all shuttle drivers are like there's a cash business that's flowing here that will eventually I think the reason I knew this thing was going to be around for a long time, so it was all about, okay, and I also have an honor code that I like to follow it by, because if I'm sitting on my butt and something guilty comes in, I got to eat it. Um, that's with my meditation, like I'm going to literally be chewing on it, so I don't want to have to chew on it, so I try to be as honest as possible. But that's, that's just my threshold and how I cooperate with time. Um... What else? But I think those are the things that make Woods Hole really special is I'm living up to that. The other is alcohol and drugs. Oh, we could go places. So, I have been. so what's that? I have been places. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so right. So here's the thing is have a hike and have a beer at the end of the day. Like it's, 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 it, that's, that's, that's the thing, right? So this hostel for several years went with that flow, but two hostels, Bob Peoples was one of them, and another in Damascus, uh, Dave's place. He used to own Mount Rogers Outfitters. Uh, both asked at trail days, asked me at trail days, what are you going to do? Yeah, 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 we're going to allow casual beer. We're going to allow it where hikers can just, you know, have a, have a real, have a beer at the end of the day. No big deal. Well, I watched on a personal hand us go to the store, yes, have a casual beer, and then a guy's... 20 year old you know he's going he's got tape beer and and i said to him that's just one beer you're having you know and he's oh yeah yeah so i couldn't like create tension but you could see that it was like a, it was a domino effect of oh this is what's going to happen is one it's going to become many and you can't control it so you can just say no and if you just say no you can always bend and break and accommodate. Like I've got one man that comes every year. He needs his nightcap. He knows where to go find the ice. I know that he needs his nightcap and I know he's not going to be a problem. And so I don't look, I don't ask. He's at home, I'm at home and we're good. But that's his personal thing. It's not the whole entire place is an alcohol friendly place. And so we're in this thing where like, everybody's having a beer in the yard and then next thing you know I've got a mess on hand or next thing you know these two people are having a spit spat and I'm like oh I gotta deal with this so I just no you know thank god for that rule <laughs> like, no drama like it's like yeah but but how does my business do it does great because I don't have to I don't have to wonder. What's sure. Yeah, sure. People don't come here because they can't have a beer. But that's okay. Then this place isn't this is this is the place where where you're just gonna have a wholesome atmosphere and everything is gonna be whole 
and the the broken pieces are going to be so so forgettable you know um that one's huge um the other thing I really like is communication. I'm huge, probably too huge as a hostel owner on communicating. Um, communicating with a hiker, let's say um, from anything. Let's say someone's settling up and it just feels like, God, this is a little bit, this is a little, uh, oh, we're actually going into a territory I really like talking about. I didn't know we we're going to go there, but um, so with communication, I started to pick up the finances are, are different. You've got somebody over here who's just the CEO and they're making tons. And you've got the guy over here who just needed to run away from life, walk away, step away, get nurtured by the woods. And money was not his focus. His health and his well-being was his focus. And both of them are important. And you got this guy here who's got a little bit of money and yet he wants to come here. So I watched Woods Hole operate as a free hostel as a little girl. And then I watched Woods Hole operate uh, as a $10 a night hostel and go, oh, this is still too stressful. I think it's all stressful, but, but one meditation course, I spent the entire nine days of my meditation course wrapping my head around how in the world I could make it so people could come here and not worry about money. How could that be a reality? Well, the whole nine days was probably a waste because I didn't solve the problem. It was after the nine days and I stuck around at the end of the meditation course on like day three, I'm sitting at the meditation center at a group sit and this pickle jar comes into my head and I was like, oh my God, people could just put money in a jar and then people could take money from the jar. Y'all, this sounds like a stupid idea because <laughs> you're like, how is this going to work? Well, what happened was I saw the pickle jar as people could just walk away with money. And I said, no, 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 this is a bad idea because they're going to go do something stupid with it. What if we rotated? Because whoever gives is wanting to give intentionally. And so I kept it within the threshold of Woods Hole so you can give to the jar and then you can receive from the jar. So a couple standing in front of me and they're settling up. And the crew now uses this when they settle people up. And you can see the tension. And I just say, I'm just going to take $40 off of your stay. And they're like, what? Right? Okay. So I hope y'all are enjoying this because this is like the most fun part. <laughs> the 2020, this is not about, I, I'm, I'm sorry. So 2020 comes along. People are thinking about Woods Hole and a few people reached out and gave Woods Hole some extra money. And I knew that they were given Woods Hole money, but I could give it to a hiker in the future. So that trail magic jar went from a few thousand dollars to several thousand dollars and so these past two years and this year specifically I morphed the system so beautifully hikers would come down and I would just say you know what we're going to trail magic your stay and randomly because of something that hit in a special way because what you find with this trail magic jar it's really hard for someone to ask for help but it's such a gift to be given. So that's kind of another way I've spun it. And then the crew has also been give, given permission, absolute permission, like use it. If you feel attention, if you feel like something's up, just, just tell them not to worry about money. Because this is what I'm loving about this experience though, is because it's like, all I have to do is just trust that it's gonna flow. And then it flows. And when it flows, like it does its thing. Um, but it's been really fun. It's been really fun to watch how it's flowed, to watch like a group of people come in and one of them, what, like there's some people who were planning on not doing dinner tonight. Don't worry. Everybody's going to do dinner. The only reason they're not going to do dinner is because they just want to be a hermit. And, um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, what else? I think, and then communication has come in the way I've worked, the way I've survived is um, through crew. So, oh, this one's a good as a hiker on the Appalachian Trail. So you're hiking the Appalachian Trail and your strict agenda is to hike from somewhere to somewhere. Flip-flopping is a huge bonus if you decide to flip-flop. Um, Mary and I were talking about it and I was telling all the reasons why I think flip-flopping is the way to go these days. Um, 
So what I wanted to get to was don't miss out on the opportunity to do a work for stay. You can have plenty of money in your bank account and still do a work for stay. All you have, I had a guy, I used to do massages and he was a nurse and I was giving him a massage and after I was done, he says, you know, I want to do a work for stay, but I don't need a work for stay. I just want that experience. Can I do a work for stay? <laughs> and and uh, I said, of course, I need, I need help. You can be anybody and help. And uh, what you do for yourself if you do a work for stay is you give yourself another layer to the experience that you can't even dream of. Um, happy thoughts is one woman, she broke her, like she fractured her foot last year, two years ago last year, 21. And she's just crying, like, I gotta go home, I gotta get off the trail, I gotta let this injury rest. She's capable of walking on it, she's just not capable of hiking on it. And I had said to her in the grocery store, hey, bef what if you just happen to need to take a rest, I need help if, if you want to help out. She ends up spending the six weeks the doctor suggested that she not hike for here. And um, she had an incredible YouTube channel. I never watched it, but apparently she was really in it. And um, she said this was the memory, like one of her treasured memories was working here. Um, another work for stay that happened was uh, the nurse who wanted to do work for stay that same week that he was here i had a boy get a third degree a big burn he he opened a pressure cover got a huge burn it was nasty thank god a nurse was here and thank god a doctor was paying to stay in the tent like we had driving guests as a doctor and we had a nurse on property <laughs> And the nurse and the doctor, the nurse was there right on, right, like, right when you, like an emergency call. And the doctor showed up two hours later, just like in an emergency call. And the, the nurse was able to give him right away advice. The doctor was able to look at the injury and tell him, yeah, you need to keep clean clothes and you need to put antibiotic on or, and, you know, the, the cream, that kind of thing. So those are, and they, the, and the nurse just happened to decide to do work for say, so don't miss a, even even if um, you love the trail, but you can always call a hostel and say, hey, I want to come help out for it. Well, it depends on the hostel, but I'm sure more people are into it than I know. But um, offer to help out because um, it's, it's just a gift. Right foot who drove in today, that's what he does. He shows up, he comes out, comes out, helps for however long, and then heads home, and it's his kind of getaway place. So. Cool. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Um, they're not they're not all like Woods Hole, I've got to tell you. <laughs> they're not, but they're all learning from Woods Hole, I'm sure. You guys got questions for Devil? Sun's up there, by the way. <laughs> we might need to get everything back on the porch. People might want to sit back up there. I don't know. The sun's up there. <laughs> nice. No questions? Cool. Awesome. Well, I hope what, you guys... what do you find the biggest problem uh, interacting with hikers or issue that you're dealing with? Oh, okay. I love it. Uh, this, this is a good question. Okay. The uh, biggest issue that I'm dealing with is myself. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I get in my own way. In, Usually, in what way? okay, let me show you an example. A hiker comes in and they've had a bad day. It really is my job to see through that bad day and like just see how I can not give them, not spoil them, but just like, what do you need? If I'm not, if I'm, if I'm not coming to the surface, it's because I'm having a bad day and they're there to remind me to slow down, to show up, to calm down, to go breathe. But it's never, it's never their bad day. One guy come in, came in one day and like chewed out one of the girls helping here. Ba, 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 ba. And she comes to me and she says, Neville, he's really mad. We wouldn't give him a ride back up to the trail after we told him we were full and he couldn't stay here because we just had too many people. Like, what do we do? And my comment to her was, don't make his bad day your bad day. And, uh, and she was like, oh, wow, you're right, you know? Because eventually what will happen when they come in kind of feeling rough, 
They'll get a shower, they'll get cleaned up, they'll have a soda, and they're just here to relax. Um, let me give you another bad experience that's, like if you were to ask me if I've ever had a, oh, oh, do we have time for another fun story? Okay, because we can scoot this on. Just, I'm sorry. So what happens when a bad hiker comes in? They're out there, right? Of course. They're not a bad hiker. They're just having a perpetual bad day, okay? Guy comes in this past uh, spring and it's a freezing rain. We're talking we're cold right now. We're joking about cold right now. That cold was bad. He had $5 in his wallet. He came down thinking, I just got to get warm. They'll just let me, you know, get a cup of coffee, get inside, and then I'll be out of there. He's standing at the door. He's ice cold. His hands, I mean, all the hikers are piling in the bunkhouse, getting, getting warm. And I bump in and I said, whoa, what's going on? And he says, oh, I just, just want a cup of coffee. And Sharon's going to get him coffee. I said, forget the coffee. We'll get you coffee. Let's get you here to stay the night. Let's get you warm. And he says, oh, but, but I don't have money. So Trail Magic Jar, y'all heard about that. Bam, he's here, he's staying, he's golden. Well, guess what? Knock, 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 Neville, he's a bad guy. Neville, he's a bad guy. Two different hikers at two different moments came to me and said, this is a bad guy. What I do when I hear about somebody being bad is I go to them and I said, okay, hey, I hear something bad about you. Huh? I heard that you were rummaging through their stuff. You may have stolen something. You've pissed them off. Well, <laughs> I didn't do that. That's not what I did. I said, it's not my, it's, I'm not going to try to figure out what you did. But I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you stay here and don't mess up while you're here. If you mess up while you're here, I'm going to let the other hostels and the whole trail know that you messed up while you're here. So don't mess up. Okay. So you either get, holy shit, thank you, or you get, I'm gonna get out of here anyway. They don't stay, I've had that happen. And so what happens with this guy who comes in who's freaking freezing cold, I did this in front of his peers. I did this on the spot and I did it instinctively. I said, how is the best way to tell this guy's been being a jerk and I'm gonna let him stay anyway? And I just instinctively said, the best way to do this is to put him in front of other people. It's gonna put him on the spot and it's gonna shrink him down, but they're gonna know that I know, that they know, that I know, that we know, that we're keeping an eye on him. And now, and so I did it in front of them and I asked them, what do y'all think? How do, you, how do you like how I'm handling this? Because this is a foreign concept. And they're like, it's your ship. And I was like, yep, it is my ship. <laughs> and, and then they were like, and then he and I stepped out. He stepped out, I stepped out. He looked at me and he gave me his little, you know, excuse. And I knew not to worry about the past. I knew we had the future. And so I stepped away, kept doing my job. He stayed in the bunkhouse. And this is the cool part. He sits down with his peers and he tells them the shit he's been through and how everybody has been pushing him down. The system has not allowed him to come up. He's just, he's been, he's, you know, it's like he went to jail, his mother died, he did something, he had to go back to jail. It's just like, the, and the, I don't know what he said, but all I know is one of the hikers came to me and he said, Here's 30 bucks. Take care of this guy's stay for me. Like add this to his stay. And, um, and I was just like, awesome. And they realized that by him being given a hand, he was being, he was being lifted out of a system that was just breaking him, you know? So we get too narrow minded on what the right thing to do is. Um, they, we then took it to the next level and, um, I told him, I said, awesome, I'm glad you've made this connection with these guys. Why don't you go to the resupply closet, load up, just tell me the money. Like, tell, I want to know the money. I want to record it. Just, but take what you want. Go to the loaner clothes. If you find anything synthetic, take. And that way you can get that next, because you got a journey ahead of you. And it was just my way of keep giving. Um, that is such 
So one of the guys was a psychologist who was part of the peer group. And he came to me and he said, so what's your favorite part of this job? And that was, that is my favorite part of this job. Without a doubt, when I can affect something like that, where you can have someone who's been pushed down and you can say, you know, we can forget, we can forgive, but we cannot repeat. So. Very cool. Very cool. Good story. Good for you. I know, isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>